Foot Clint on today's episode. A lot of injuries got to be covered, and then we are picking up good vibes and bad vibes. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Hungering for something new this summer? HelloFresh has got your back. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, your new favorite meal could be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And before we start today's show, I want to thank Wealthfront for supporting the podcast. Uh, stonks, memes, rocket <laughs> ships, day trading. What's it all about? There's a lot of talk there, but if you actually want to grow your long-term wealth and make it to the moon, Mike, you should open up a Wealthfront investment account. Decades of data shows that investors that trade individual stocks, you know, you kind of, you get into that excitement, that underperforms the market every year. In fact, only 1% of day traders beat the market. So the odds are not in your favor, so you can team up with Wealthfront they can create a portfolio of globally diversified low ind low cost index funds personalized for you no manual trades no picking stocks no watching the stock market every day and freaking out they handle all of it and uh, wealthfront is trusted with over 20 billion dollars of assets and you can get your first $5000 managed for free by going to wealthfront.com/footballers to get your first 5000 managed for free for life, go to wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W E A L T H F R O N T dot com slash footballers to start growing your savings. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers and get started today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore. And Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, August 30th. That was the largest declaration of Monday in the history of the week. In the history. Of Monday! Monday! Well, the NFL season is oh, it's so close. Fastly approaching. It's so close. So much to talk about on today's episode. A lot of you coming down off of a draft weekend, ourselves included. We had ourselves a League of Record draft last night. Mm -hmm. Jason essentially drove home, went to sleep, woke up, and here he is. I'm right back where I left. And uh, we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. We ate a lot of Traeger barbecue, oh. and uh, I, it was the it was really good. <laughs> it was it, delicious. It was delicious. We have preseason games to talk about. Today's show is going to be some news. I mean, there was another devastating season-ending injury we need to discuss, and good vibes, bad vibes. So we've seen the preseason, and we followed training camp, and there's just kind of you know, a momentum aspect to what's happening in the NFL. Some teams, there are good vibes. There are some players that we're paying attention to or or maybe even some rewriting of the narratives in terms of what people thought. And that could be very valuable if you have a draft coming up, trade-wise, even who you start in week one because the season is coming quickly. So that is on today's show. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And if you haven't drafted, you can go to ultimatedraftkit.com, prep up. If you have drafted, you can go to ultimatedraftkit.com, get that UDK Plus and get the draft analyzer and get a grade. People have been sharing grades all over the place. I had never seen, I didn't think our system could give you an A plus. Mm. And I saw one. I saw somebody with an A plus, one man league. I think <laughs> someone's a big liar. But I was impressed. So It was a good team. We also have a bit of an announcement. Whoop. This is exciting. Last year, you may, or last couple years, mm -hmm. you've been able to catch us live once a week on SiriusXM in the afternoons. Uh, this year, we are very excited to announce that our weekly live show will now be on Spotify Greenroom. That means everyone can listen. You listening right now? 
can listen. Yes, Green Room is the new live audio app from Spotify. Uh, starting this week, like in two days, you can join us live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, all season long. We'll be live Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. Here's what you do. You just download the Spotify Green Room app, follow Fantasy Footballers on the app, and you'll be notified when we're live. Yeah. Come, That's it. Come cut it up with us in the way that these uh, like this platform works with Green Room. Who knows? Maybe you'll get called up onto the big stage and, uh, and be able to have a conversation with us. Ask it, us a question. And even if you aren't, you know, you're nervous to get up on the big stage and you just want to listen, I can testify, Al, you've heard it. Mike has gone to work, and he's he's recorded some oh, yes. some fresh music. Yeah, it for, slaps, as they say. Yeah, as you, that's you, what the kids say. That's what you said. So it, I can affirm it was wonderful. I felt like also maybe the uh, Power Rangers could fight during it. That's one of my best qualities when I write with music. your music. Yeah. So I I have the Green Ranger. He's he's uh, up up on my wall. And I look at that thing, and I'm inspired. The Green Ranger for Green Room? Yes. I get it. Yeah. Uh, so Spotify Green Room live every week. He's That'll... also the best ranger, so, you know. You were a Green Ranger? Oh, wait, what? what people, a... people were not all on Team Green Ranger? Uh, I was, but what was what was the story? The White Ranger was a the, favorite, too. The same guy, the, right? Because the Green Ranger turned into the White oh, Ranger. Oh, so I was not – I was confused about the order. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it might have been different for you guys. I was at an age, the pink ranger. Yes, yes, Jason. <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> oh, my God. We all grew up. We all have our favorites. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all righty. Any other uh, things to talk about at the top, or should we jump into news, Brooksy? Let's jump in the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Well, the big news. Bad vibes. Yeah, this sucks. Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins will miss the entire 2021 season. After an MRI conducted Sunday confirmed torn ACL. Might even be worse than that. I've seen some people talking mm. about LCL, more complicated recovery. Another second year running back, right? Cam Akers gone yeah. for the year. Now J.K. Dobbins. Devastated for him. I actually this this put me on tilt a little bit beyond just J.K. Dobbins because we haven't I don't think we've done our like Super Bowl predictions on the show mm -hmm. and uh, but the Ravens are my AFC Super Bowl pick. In fact, they were my Super Bowl winning team, and I don't know if I'm gonna adjust based on losing Dobbins or not. But he was part of a rushing attack that was set to be great, and so now you turn to Gus Edwards. Mike tweeted for the Ravens backfield, wherever I feel comfortable drafting Dobbins, that's the same spot I'd feel comfortable drafting Gus. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. We weren't the highest on, on Dobbins, Mike, but do you Correct. want to elaborate on your yeah, thoughts just, here? Gus Edwards, I think we've seen enough evidence that he's a good player. And, I mean, the when, when it comes to a Ravens running back, you're not drafting them going, oh, I'm, I'm getting the pass-catching running back. I'm going to get all those targets from Lamar Jackson because those targets do not exist. So you wanted a player who's going to capture a large amount of the, the rushing market share. I believe that Gus Edwards is that guy. Could they add a veteran? Of course. But at this point, there's no one on the street that – is better than Gus Edwards. There's a reason that they are not employed in the NFL if the Ravens are able to bring them into the backfield. It's for depth, and Gus Edwards is going to be the guy. He's going to get a large amount of the goal line carries as well. We know Lamar will take his, but it's going to be Lamar and Gus. Like with The, the rushing touchdowns will belong to those two guys. Not expected to pursue Todd Gurley at this time, according to Josina Anderson. No a, one a doy. I mean... <laughs> Like, I don't think anyone is pursuing Todd Gurley at this time or ever again, but... He pursues them. Right. He is he's a big name, and so his name always comes up whenever someone gets injured. Um, I, You know, I, I can't imagine a world where they go in with this exact roster and don't add someone, but... What about Justice Hill? 
uh, I remember the hype on Justice Hill. That was fun, and and uh, he'll certainly get an opportunity. But I do think that they will bring someone else in. If the roster started week one the way that it is now, and they don't bring anyone else in, then I agree with you, Mike. Wherever you're drafting, Dobbins is is where you should have Gus. I I have him a little bit lower just out of the. But is expectation. there any your, any names that you are thinking of in particular? If you say, well, if the Ravens had this guy, there's been a that lot of kind of freak me out for Gus. Yeah, I I made this joke last night when I drafted him late in our league of record, but there's been rumors of, and it really depends on who's cut tomorrow at four sure. p.m. is when NFL rosters have to be down to fifty three. So if someone like Latavius Murray. Uh, who's been talked about possibly uh, getting cut, someone like that lands on the open market, then, you know, I think you could see that happen. Um, maybe David Johnson gets cut or who, who who knows, but I tomorrow we'll have more information on what vets could possibly go to Rex the Ravens. Rex Burkhead to the Ravens. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, some more final death to Jason news. <laughs> Brandon Ayuk did not play in Sunday's preseason I'm finale. Three for three, baby. Slight hamstring injury. Oh my goodness! Those never last the whole year, right? Never. Right, no, Debo? They've never hamstrung anyone. Um, so that means CD went to COVID list. Mm -hmm. Clyde hurt his ankle, mm -hmm. and uh, Ayuk is just a slight hamstring. I asked. Injury. I literally tweeted, "Someone hide him," and they didn't listen. Yeah, especially in San Francisco, where the injuries are. Somehow just more prolific. Uh, this is, I mean, significant news as well. Colts veteran wide receiver T.Y. Hilton. Bad vibes with this injury. Missing multiple games due to a disc issue in his neck. The team came out and, like, Reich basically said, yeah, we're optimistic it's not season ending. That's not good. Oh, my good. goodness. I mean, they, and you, when you deal with neck and disc and and – I don't think we see T.Y. Hilton for a long time. Yeah, he. I, I agree completely. And this allows Michael Pittman, even with T.Y. Hilton on the field, we expected Michael Pittman to become the one for this team mm -hmm. for fantasy purposes and for real life purposes. But now this is 100% Michael Pittman's job. I mean, we, we've talked about, you know, Marquez Callaway being the last man standing, um, you know, over I don't, for I the don't feel that way here at all, though. Because it, I guess you and I obviously have a very different opinion on uh, Paris Campbell. I've never believed in him, but then there is Zach Pascal, yeah, who's Zach Pascal the Tim Patrick is, of the Colts. Yeah, he's he's the kind of player that everyone's going to walk into week one and be like, this is the Michael Pittman show, and then Zach Pascal will be like six for 79 and a touchdown, and we'll be like, oh, yeah, there are other wide receivers there. It is an opportunity for Pittman, but I don't think that the team is going to – I don't think the game plan becomes – Let's just make Michael Pittman the focal point. That's not what I've seen from Frank Reich. The team does like Pascal. You do have Paris Campbell's return. So Pittman takes a notch up, but not not to a degree where I went. You know, I passed on him last night in our league of record draft. And I was very for, grateful. Yeah, I went LaVisca Chenault, a player that I have a, a similar, um, you know, second year excitement for. So, Mike, you ended up with Pittman, not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see what happens. T.Y. Hilton, though. Don't expect anything from him this year, Yeah, unfortunately. Irv Smith Jr., this news broke uh, right before the weekend. Surgery to repair a meniscus injury. He's going to be sidelined at the start of the season. I love week one for the Vikings, and everyone should prepare for Adam Thielen to look just as good as he always does yeah, in week likely. one. It's going to be Jefferson and Thielen and Cook out of the backfield and everything we've ever known about the Vikings offense. Once again, but Tyler Conklin would be the next man up. I did want to Conk, remind Conk. the listeners um, of the joy Thank that you, you can, <laughs> the joy welcome. that you can have whenever Tyler Conklin uh, <laughs> catches the ball. Please conk with us because <laughs> we will be doing it yes. while we watch the TV. We'll, whenever conk, conk. a reception happens, there it's conk conk. And uh, uh, like legitimately, Ty if you are desperate, you're in a deep league, and week one, Conklin will have an opportunity to conk as they say all right well evan ingram ever injured yeah won't return uh, or actually didn't return to the preseason game calf injury not sure what the significance is there we'll talk about this team most likely in good vibes bad vibes <laughs> not the first section <laughs> gardner Minshew traded to the eagles the jorts arrive in philly i am so confused 
by what Jacksonville did. Like you have the, I get it. You, the new coach, the rookie's got to earn his way, but you had a full on training camp air quotes, quarterback battle. The number one pick who you knew the second you drafted him was going to be your day one starter. And instead of getting him all of the training camp reps, you pretended that Gardner Minshew could actually win this battle. And then, and then when you publicly, they did. Yeah. I you're mean, shaking I, your head, but publicly no, they were saying. I'm shaking my head because you're saying that Gardner could win the battle, but there was a chance that there was a chance that, um, Lawrence lost or like didn't look good. So there were, I, you know, even if Lawrence looked bad to me with a brand he was new coach, start? he was going to start. Okay, week all one. right. That's how right. I had. That's fair. That's how I that's felt. Fair. And you go through all that song and dance. And it, look, Gardner Minshew, it, maybe he's not a franchise starting level quarterback, but having a, a a good backup quarterback, that's great to have. And you're like, no, we went through all that, and then we got a sixth round pick for this backup. It's just this is absolutely baffling to me what Jacksonville has done. I thought it was a great move by Philadelphia. The Everyone Eagles, needs a good backup quarterback, it, and Gardner is so cheap. On the salary cap. Yeah, I mean, if, if any team understands the value of a backup quarterback, <laughs> yes. it would be the team that won a Super Bowl with one. And they went out and, um, you know, I, I think it's a lot easier to run the same style of offense with Gardner behind Jalen Hurts if something happened than to completely switch from your mobile Jalen Hurts to installing Joe Flacco in there, who did not look good this preseason. So I understand the move on that on the Eagles side. Yes. What's, what's hilarious to me, though, is that the comp that I have for the Eagles this year was last year's Eagles. No, last year's oh. Jacksonville Jets. Jaguars, oh. where my concerns with Hurts is that the team won't be good enough, which is what happened to Gardner in Jacksonville last year that lost him his starting job, and he could be the guy that literally – takes a starting job right. from Hurts if he doesn't get it done. Brashad Perryman, see you later. $2 million to not play for the Lions. Whoopsies. So, um, Whoopsies. In it, some it, ways, it simplifies the equation for fantasy purposes for the Lions. I mean, you have some hype around Amon Ross St. Brown. You got Cephas, who's who yeah. contributed last year, and Tyrell Williams. Yeah, I mean, how bad do you have to be? <laughs> As Brashad Perryman, so weird. He, listen to the names you just said. He couldn't beat them out despite almost all of his money being fully guaranteed. So, um, yeah, he, he's gone. This, to me, is is good news for Tyrell Williams the most. He is, I believe, the clear wide receiver one for this team. I, I think the, the receiving option, number one, is still Hawkinson um, with this wide receiver core. And Amon Ross St. Brown hasn't really been out there as much with the starters as, as we would have thought by now with this core. Um, so Tyrell Williams is, is the wide receiver to get late in your drafts if you want a shot like a – he's like a Brandon Cooks light. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's it for news. Yep. Uh, we'll, probably, we'll probably save any Deshaun Watson trade rumors for tomorrow's show. Uh, a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. So uh, we have bold predictions on tomorrow's episode. So it'll be a spicy, spicy hot show. Burn your mouth. Uh, <laughs> that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. They just released their new web app. Just jumped into a best ball league this morning on Sleeper. Oh, very nice. With 32 others. Oh, fun. Not sure how that's going to work. Haven't seen how deep the rosters are, but... Um. Yeah, Sleeper just released their new web app, and we're wrapping up our li our family league in there as well. So make the switch over to Sleeper. Already number one in dynasty leagues. You guys want to get into it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Good vibrations. Okay. Good vibes. Bad vibes. Who's picking them up? We are going to talk through our good vibes first. We always start with, with the good, right? Yeah, we want to end on a low note. <laughs> yeah. So, Which do you prefer? When someone says, yeah, I've the, got good news and I've got bad news, where do you go? Oh, you always you usually do start with the bad. In that situation, okay. I go bad first. Do we want to do, we want to do that? That's what if someone says, I've got good vibes and bad vibes? Which one do you want first? See a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so No, let's start with the bad Let's start with the bad vibes. Okay. We'll flip it around. All right. 
bad vibes, good vibes. Um, I, I, let's bring this up since we've already. I'll I'll start. We already touched on this a little bit, but it was interesting to me, Andy. I did not know that you had Baltimore as your preseason Super Bowl pick. That is where I was too. But the bad vibes, and it's not just J.K. Dobbins. It was J.K. Dobbins late in preseason, which much to Mike's chagrin, you know, seems like something you could have avoided by not playing your players uh, yep. deep in the preseason. But you also have Marquise Brown, who hasn't been there. You have Rashad Bateman, your your first round rookie, who has not been there. And it to me, it says that this is still a teensy tiny pie uh, and the passing game here for the Ravens and the whole offense really is. I, I'm is not good vibes. That's their defense has looked awesome in preseason, but I feel like I'm worried about their offense. Are you worried about the offense or just the passing attack of the offense? Well, I think it matters when you lose J.K. Dobbins to the running game, and and now there's you know if what if Gus gets injured, right? Like, sure, are they just going to be able to do it with anyone? I don't, I don't think they will. So I'm, I'm worried about the offense as a whole, not. Lamar's fantasy value. If anything, Lamar's going to have to run more now, and Lamar's going to be safe. But yeah, the the vibes just seem. I I find year over year the teams that are um just dealing with a lot of injuries heading into the season those those bad vibes tend to really get them off to a bad start. And when I think about who's been more injured than Baltimore's offense this preseason, I don't think that. Um... I think that it's very fair to say there's been bad vibes surrounding the injuries and obviously with Dobbins and that situation, but I don't think that's necessarily exclu you know, mutually exclusive with believing that they can put it together for a championship run. Like I think the team they're gonna get healthier over the course of the year. Lamar can carry a team on offense. Um they have always had a tiny passing pie and he's managed to bring them to the precipice of a you know, getting to the Super Bowl before Mark Andrews about to Go Pac-Man on that pie. I, mm. I love, 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 you know, the way that this team – it stabilized the way that Pittsburgh stabilized. Tomlin's a great coach, and, and Harbaugh's a great coach. Yeah. And so I do – They you know, did just I set the NFL record for consecutive preseason wins. So it's oh. not all bad vibes. I think 20 – 20 straight. Is it 20, 20, 20 straight, straight Seriously? wins Yeah, it feels like a joke. <laughs> uh, but I guess if, if you play your starters – Hey, yeah. um, he's, he's going after that. Record. I did have the same thought you had where it's like, okay, you're thinner, thinner at running back. Obviously Gus is, he's going to have to hold up, but it's the same with ironically, my NFC pick, like my AFC and NFC picks have both lost their starting running backs. Like the Rams, I think. And it's, but, but it's based on the defense. I mean, I think the defense is what holds those teams up. And then you have playmakers on offense that get it done. Um, for me, it's, it's bad vibes around the Buffalo backfield. So Buffalo backfield is going to be entirely. Yeah. It's going to be completely useless and for fantasy and reality it's going to be a useless backfield again. And if you wanted to, because they don't need them, you don't need them. <laughs> they had zero rushing attempts in the first quarter yesterday with the starters out there. People looked at, you know, Devin Singletary had the first 12 snaps in the bills opening drive. I don't care. I don't care that he had the first 12. It means nothing to me about how they view him versus Zach Moss. Because they literally said, we don't care who's out there. It was, okay, our third down back's going out there because we're going to pass the ball 12 straight times. I mean, that because this is how our offense goes. And they did it without Diggs, and he was – Josh Allen looked unbelievable. He looked tremendous. In our league of record draft last night, I was uh, – just because there's, there's pick trading and stuff, so I was very light on early round picks. And I my team was fully bullied into the lowest T – Zero running back team I have ever gone after in this league of record draft. And Devin Singletary and Zach Moss were there, and it was, nah, nah, man. I don't I don't even think it's worth the shot for this team. I desperately need a running back, and it was, these guys are just going to clog my roster and give me no production. That's how it feels. And it was funny because the, uh, like, when you talk about bad vibes, they went the whole quarter, didn't need to run at all. You know, obviously Josh Allen can run the football. And then they finally run the ball, right? It's like, we're going to do a drop play. And it was to Zach Moss and he got caught in the backfield. And I feel like everyone on the sidelines going, that's why we don't run the football. And they back, back to the pass. So, uh, 
you know, there I'm, I was with you, Mike. It was like my co-manager kept staring down Zach Moss going, what about him? And the line you go to is, well, he's a starter. Yeah. You got a starter. No, you really don't. You have two backups. That's that's exactly right? how it feels. You have two backups. I, I'm more on the Singletary side over sure. Zach Moss. And even then, like I, I think Singletary is the guy to have, but I look and I'm like, he's the guy to have that you don't want to have. I, yeah, it's it's one of those situations where it's it's really a lose lose. And when or if one of them goes down to injury, there will be this huge oh, overreaction yeah. that now we finally have the winner. And it's gonna be uh, no. That's why I avoided him. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. All right, before we get into some more bad vibes, want to thank today's sponsors, Indochino is good vibes good vibes when i'm rocking my indochino suit if you see me on the gram with my custom oh, tailored the, Indo oh man the gram oh i mean look that's how we grammars uh talk <laughs> bad vibes <laughs> <laughs> look i mean i i have a custom tailored suit from indochino it was so easy to go down to one of their showrooms have their tailor just measure me quickly i've done it before at home as well measured myself my wife did it you could do it either way but when you get a custom tailored suit you look outstanding I can't watch anyone on TV anymore in a suit without judging them for their bunching up in stupid places because I'm like, just go get a perfectly tailored suit. They are made to measure, and the best part is Indochino suits start at just $399 with all the customizations included. It is absolutely how you want to look when you go to any important event and right now they're open at select nordstrom stores giving you more ways to get great fitting and personalized clothing find your nearest location at indochino.com and right now you can get 50 dollars off any purchase of 3.99 or more using the code footballers at checkout that's 50 bucks off a purchase of 3.99 or more at indochino i-n-d-o-c-h-i-n-o.com promo code footballers Football is right around the corner, and you can get in on that action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And with the NFL returning, DraftKings is giving new customers $200 in free bets instantly when you bet $1 or more on any football game. This is an outrageous deal for new customers. Head to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and place a bet of $1 or more on any week one game, and you're going to get $200 in free bets instantly and for week one DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at a one million dollar top prize nothing adds to the excitement of watching a game quite like having a free shot at a million dollars I don't disagree <laughs> with that statement uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to receive $200 in free bets when you place a one dollar bet on any football game and get a free shot at a million bucks with your first deposit that's promo code BALLERS for unlimited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and a $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in, in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. All right. Uh, we will stay here with bad vibes for a, but a moment before we flip it to the good um i will throw out another name for the dynasty oh inclined. dynasty waiver wire yeah i mean tyson williams yes uh should we don't be know added. if it's, it's justice hill or tyson williams so yeah the beat reporter is making it sound like it'll be tyson williams okay so that's a backup for gus Wed gus edwards in baltimore mm -hmm. uh just in case right yes uh, absolutely now mike who who was your bad vibes that so, stood out uh, I, I want it for me. It's the Lions, and that, I don't think that's uh, breaking news to people. They started that, bad and they kept right on going. Yeah, like they really never turned it around in the off season. And then you have, I mean, your your one of your big acquisitions was Brashad Perryman. You're like, uh, whoops, enjoy your money, Brashad. We'd rather have you not on this team. And DeAndre Swift is. What do you do? With this player, high draft capital pick uh, just a year ago. It broke out in the second half of the season. Great player, but in such a bad situation. And now he is going into the season with a groin injury. And the quote from head coach Dan Campbell was, ah! was Swift concerns me a little bit just with getting his win back and being able to take a load. How much can he? Where is he at? We don't know if DeAndre Swift is going to play week one. We don't. 
if he does, can you really play him with confidence? And this is a player that you're drafting in the top half of your draft, and you have him talking about using Jamal Williams and Swift as a as an Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram combination. Like I, it's it's really hard to get a beat on what fantasy value is DeAndre Swift really going to bring to the table, and it's bad vibes right now week one I would rather even if they're both active I would rather start Jamal Williams over DeAndre Swift because when when you and it's against San Francisco yeah it's so not it's, the best matchup and no. Hawkinson uh, while I've been uh, talking him up I I absolutely think he's going to break out I I made a trade for him last night in the draft he's dealing with his own uh, you know shoulder injury the the reports there have been better that he's going to be ready week one no problem but the vibes are Oh, man. They well, are it, not good in Detroit. Ambiguity on a team that doesn't necessarily have upside is not exciting for fantasy. Right. I mean, competing to pick which Lions running back you can have for the last 20 years has been um, painful. So it doesn't matter who's there. There's still the, okay, now you have def – even if you knew, you would still have some questions, right, about what this offense is going to look like. Um, and you know, they, even their rookie, but Sewell, yeah, Sewell, the, uh, the, everyone was banging the drum. The Bengals should have drafted Sewell. They've ruined their offensive line by going Jamar Chase and Sewell to his credit. He's playing out of position right now over at right tackle, but, Ewell. but it, yeah, Ewell is, it's not been a smooth transition to the NFL outmatched right now. Yeah. So let's, let's make it positive now. Yeah. Let's look at some good vibes. What's going on right now that makes you excited as we head into the 2021 season, Mr. Moore? Uh, it was the flip side of a bad vibe. <laughs> Look, if you're not running the ball at all in Buffalo, you're throwing it. So the passing attack for the Bills is outstanding. You know, there there is, r at least analytically, reason to question last year's Buffalo Bills. Um, the fact that Josh Allen went up like 20% on his – uh, you know, completion percentage, was this an outlier? Um, the fact that they couldn't get the running game going, was that something they wanted to fix and get back to a more balanced offense? And the vibes from the preseason to me say complete 100% confidence in the passing game for the Bills, in Josh Allen, in Diggs, in their other options as well. Um, and Gabriel Davis, he was an off-season hype machine where then they brought in Emmanuel Sanders, mm -hmm. and it really seemed like, well, Gabe Davis is going to take a back seat, but he's been very good, and Emmanuel Sanders has been dealing with a foot injury. So uh, when I look at this whole passing attack, I want I want pieces. I, uh, I'm i fine with it. Um, I think Cole Beasley is an exceptional value in drafts right now. Um, yeah. he's, he's fallen uh, so far. So Now, in our draft, Jason, last night – our round two, which is there's a three keeper league, so it's not round two, more like a round five. You traded away Josh Allen, correct? You correct. had you had him as one of your keepers heading into the draft. You traded him essentially straight up for TJ Hawkinson. Do you regret that trade at all? I, I don't regret it. I was able to get Jalen Hurts um, later. I was really I was uh, I the one thing that made me super sad. My plan was to get Dak. And stack him with Amari Cooper. Okay. He went one pick before me later. But then way later in the draft, I got um, uh, Hurts. I, I was capital starved, and I didn't want that much capital in a quarterback position when I can find someone late and add a different position. So has, has your good vibes changed? Like We have our listener league draft. You know, it's just a full redraft situation. Has the good vibes on the on the Bills elevated Josh Allen to a, to a place where you're like, I'm – that ADP doesn't look so yes outpriced. Yes. I I, th I think it's a that, juicier. Yeah, I, I think where Josh Allen is going is appropriate in in most leagues okay. right now. I think that it's interesting, specifically with Diggs and Hopkins this year, whether they can sustain the volume and target share that they had last year. Obviously, talent wise, they can. But both teams have some interesting pieces around them now. Arizona drafted Rondale Moore. They have A.J. Green in the offense. And you have, uh, obviously, Chase Edmonds is going to get more work than he had last year. And then with, with the Bills, I mean, you brought it up. Gabriel Davis going into year two. Emmanuel Sanders was a part of the offense uh, in their 
first quarter the other day. And so it's good for Kyler and it's good for Josh Allen, but I'm curious about those two because they had so many targets last year. So uh, my good vibes, it, it's all around the 49ers rushing attack with Raheem Mostert and Trey Sermon, both of who I think will be extremely valuable this season. I mean, we saw a little bit of a, a taste test on the rotational quarterback situation, something we didn't bring up in the news because I knew it was coming up here where Jimmy Garoppolo was out there and then you brought in, you know, you brought in Trey Lance with the starters and, and then you ran, I mean, they, they ran this play where it was a read option and the defense bit on Trey Lance and then Raheem Moster with his yep. league winning speed took the outside for 12 yards. And it was like, I think he ran for 7.5 a clip on seven carries yesterday. They rushed for 242 yards and four touchdowns in the preseason game, which again, it's just preseason, but you know what isn't? The last two years where they were second and fourth in running back fantasy points. This is a team where independent of the Trey Lance variable, the 49ers deliver fantasy points automatically with Kyle Shanahan. And Moster looks electric again. Sermon has looked great. And Trey Lance is going to unlock more opportunities for them. Whether he's rotated in and there's 10 plays where the running backs have a, an advantage or he becomes the starter because he's just too hard to keep off the field, you're going to have some real opportunities for both players. I will not be shocked if Trey Sermon is a flex-worthy player from week two on, and Mostert, if he stays healthy, is going to blow people's minds. He went so late. I traded up for him yesterday. I know people know that I, I'm a sympathizer for or a lover of, of Mostert, but mm -hmm. I don't see how this team, if those guys are out there and Trey Lance is out there, don't destroy compared to their average draft position. Yeah. I think they're being drafted back of the sixth, back of the seventh. Could you imagine trying to be a defensive coordinator against this offense? You don't know what the quarterback is. On every play, you have to game plan against two the 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 read options like I just I mean Jimmy Garoppolo ended up with a rushing touchdown which yeah. was hysterical to me um in the sense that it's just like you you can't guard it's like this crazy horizontal yeah you have two other running backs where Debo like, and Ayuk I feel like you need all your guys on the line of scrimmage but then you definitely don't want to do that either well, and then Kittle's running the middle of the field right and I mean you guys we were fantasy players so remember when Robert Griffin the third showed up in the league and annihilated people with the read option yep who was his offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan and who was his running yeah. back Alfred Al Morris <laughs> yeah. who had like who was awesome a thousand million yards that year yeah that he was, was the number he was the waiver guy he was the hot waiver pickup of that didn't year. he have like 1600 rushing yards or something uh I don't think it was that high but it was I mean he was a league winning Waiver pickup. It is you. Oh, no, you were correct. Sixteen hundred <laughs> rushing I'm, yards. I, that's the number that jumped oh out. Oh my gosh! It was sixteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm telling you. Like, I know injury is something fair to be concerned oh about with all forty ers but don't miss out. Injury is a risk, but in the seventh round, it's a it's a risk, risk you can worth take. Taking. Yeah. So I am. I was encouraged. The back injury talk of Raheem Mostert seemed. I don't know if you got a back injury, you probably don't play. In preseason game three, and you probably don't run for seven and a half a clip. So, and speaking of seventh round running backs, that's where my good vibes are on. They're on Damian Harris, running back for the New England Patriots. They traded away Sony Michelle, who was going to eat into Damian Harris's market share for sure. And what did we see in the preseason? But he took he took every snap on first and second down with the starters. I'm not proclaiming Damian Harris is a three down running back. James White is the third down running back for the Patriots. But that's fine for a running back you're taking in the seventh round. ADP-wise off a sleeper right now in half-point PPR, Damian Harris is running back 31. That's behind Ronald Jones, who is also a two-down running back, but he has far more competition with Leonard Fournette. Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams. like Who is... who Does Melvin Gordon carry value the entire season? No. Does, does Javante? No, it's going to take some time. James, even James Robinson, we he, who became, uh, like he he stole the spotlight back after the unfortunate injury to Travis Etienne, but look at the snap count with Carlos Hyde and James Robinson. They're they were both on the field a ton with Trevor Lawrence, and they're an actual bad team. Where the New England Patriots, 
They could be a 500. Will it shock people if the Patriots are over 500 this year? No. So I'd rather have a running back on a winning team. And Damian Harris, this isn't just opportunity or draft price. This is also talent. Like, Can I can I put somebody in the sidecar? Sure. Like if Damian Harris is riding like a, a motorcycle? Like a motorcycle? Oh, yeah. Like can I put – if this is the good vibes motorcycle, Mac Jones is in the sidecar. Yes. I mean, That's he's, part of the good vibes for Damian Harris. He's looked outstanding, and, and I think Mac is going to take the job either now or soon. It, and You want to know who's not going to rush the touchdowns in at the goal line? <laughs> right. Mac Jones. No, he's got more of a Phillip Rivers uh, speed level. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 obviously the last mock draft we did, I shocked the world because I'm on Damian Harris now. What the changes that have been made, shipping out Sony, and and the fact that I don't think Cam Newton's going to play that many games this season says to me that Damian Harris should be a really, really good value. I'm not sure I would take him over James Robinson, but those other running backs you mentioned. Well, no, James Robinson is going in the sixth as running back 25, probably even higher as his ADP catches up. That you can take both. That that was sure. my point is the confidence in those running backs. To me, it should be like equally as strong for Damian Harris, who is going in the seventh round. I want to publicly apologize to Mac Jones for comparing his forty time to Philip Rivers. <laughs> That's just not something that was fair. What do you do you want to guess Philip Rivers forty time? This is oh. the your favorite part of the show, the Philip Rivers are. I let's go five six. It's five point oh eight. Five point oh eight. Really? Okay. Yeah. Mac Jones was four seven nine. Drew Brees was four eight three. So uh, how are these guys so fast? <laughs> yeah, they're all much faster than we are. That's like, for sure. I, that sounds slow when you're used to the 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 blazing speed of running backs and stuff, but that's very fast for someone that looks pathetic when they try and run and around. Phil Rivers did he did walked it. He sped walk it. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't like actually, a like a he, mall he was, walker. He, he, was mall where, walker. he was holding three pound weights <laughs> in his hands. Ankle weights too. Of oh, course. for sure. He's got to get his sweat in. And uh, really, really blazed the trail there. He was the first NFL quarterback to sign a sneaker deal with New Balance. <laughs> Did you see Mac Jones' deal? No. He signed with No Bull. Really? Oh, for real? Yeah. Former sponsor. Yeah, they're okay. they're coming after it, man. It's just it's very interesting to see how shoe deals are going to work out now in the NFL. Huh. Interesting. Uh, you touched on a couple of situations that I'll bring up as well as we get to mailbag. Um, the Jacksonville running back situation – which, by the way, good vibes Trevor Lawrence yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, 11 for 12. Chenault heavily involved. Uh, like, Trevor Lawrence is great. Yeah. He's, he's absolutely great. I, I would throw in just I am so impressed with this rookie quarterback class through preseason. Mm -hmm. the, all the rookie quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, Fields, Lance, Zach, Lawrence. Zach Wilson has looked Zach. great. Literally, I'm waiting for one of these guys to – we know Kellen Mond. Go with Mond as the one that not looking good. We know all these guys won't work out, right? Like statistically, Maybe. historically, but that's how I feel. I'm like Mond. It James really Mond. feels like all five of these guys are going to hit. James Robinson played 33 snaps. Carlos Hyde played 28. Robinson was out. I, I was actually encouraged by the fact that he was out there for the first two drives. Sure, and he had a target, and that was something we hadn't seen, and that's what helped him last year. Um, I'm not expecting last year James Robinson, but there is a place for him. Like, yes, yeah. We, yeah my my talk up of Carlos Hyde was not disparaging James Robinson. It was just it's, it's highlighting the fact that the, he will have another player on the field, unlike last year. This one was weird to me. I need your help. Okay. okay. So Javante Williams didn't play. He was a healthy scratch in the preseason win. Yeah. Which wouldn't bother me. Okay. If. The team didn't play their starters, and Teddy was out there. Now, they said that they'd seen enough of Javante, and they wanted to feature Melvin Gordon early, which also makes sense, right? Melvin didn't get a lot of preseason play. So I'm trying to read this situation, and maybe you guys can help me because I can read it both ways. I buy it completely at face value. I believe what they're saying because it makes what, sense. They what is want, the face value? The face value is that they saw enough from Javante and they needed to get or they felt they wanted to get more work from Melvin Gordon. If Who Javante looked great is, again. Yeah, I mean, Mel, uh, who's the starter? I don't know. I think it starts It'll with Melvin, Melvin Gordon for, being for the now. starter. Um, and over the course of the season, it's probably going to be a one-two punch and a frustrating backfield. But... Um, there were good vibes getting Melvin Gordon out there, getting Cortland Sutton out there, mm -hmm. um, actually looking good. I um, was impressed with the cuts. Plant, I mean, planting on his surgically repaired knee. Which yeah, is, so, that's, you need to 
to clear that mental hurdle, and it could just be that one cut that that Cortland Sutton goes, okay, okay, I'm good. Yeah, I, I, I think it was smart to sit Javante and say, we don't do want to risk getting him injured. We don't need to. We want to get Melvin Gordon work, and it worked out. Tried to spend 25 fab on Tyson Williams, and uh, he went for 35. Oh, mm -hmm. brutal. Cheapskate. Uh, other, one other situation, you know, I talked about having the, the jacket. Was that on this show, did I say it, or was that on the footcast? Like where I'm, I've been a DJ Moore oh, the, truther yeah, this off season. No, it was it was the main episode. So I would, I mean, he looked good. I mean, 38 of Sam Darnold's 41 snaps. DJ Moore was out there, caught six, all six of his targets. Um, was nice to see. It, uh, Darnold looked good um, as well. And then Nico Collins played 20 of 27 first team snaps for the Texans. Yeah, he's third there. round rookie wide receiver. He was one of the players that it was like oh, I was very kind of disappointed to see him go to Houston with all of the stuff that they're dealing with but Nico Collins is a very interesting rookie especially like what if it's Tua, bad vibes. what if Tua ends up over there it, that's far more interesting the, the vibes for the Texans are bad but the wide receiver core has Brandon Cooks and that's Chris really, Conley like Nico Collins could step up and see a an eighteen percent target share. I don't know how that will translate into fantasy, but he has an option, or a, a, he he could see some some serious targets this year. Yeah, those targets though. That yeah, that's, I'm, those I'm not endorsing the no, targets. I know you're right. It's just saying opportunity drives fantasy football. And, and if they make a trade, if they end up shipping off Deshaun Watson, then they will probably get a better quarterback uh, at some point. Um, couple mailbag questions. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right, let's put it to the test. Griffin in Columbus, Ohio. Would you draft Gus Edwards over James Robinson? No. Personally, I would. Yes. He did go ahead of James Robinson yesterday in our league. Where of so? I was hoping to it. not answer. Yeah. Um, yes, I would take Gus over James Robinson. Ethan in Utah. Is there any special value in a running back defensive stack? For example, Najee in the Steelers D. Uh, I mean. Look, the the correlation is not really there. Like if, I've heard people talk about this more in the the realm of playing, you know, DFS on DraftKings or something like that. But I'm so I'm not going after this. If it falls to you, okay, the Steelers are going to be a great defense. Yeah, in a certain matchup, whatever, it's fine. But you should be streaming your defense, so you don't have the you don't really look to stack it and and let it ride. You're going to change your defense every single. Week, even if you've got the Steelers, you're not going to play them against the Chiefs or, uh, you know, certain matchups. I will say just emotionally, my least favorite thing in the world is when I am starting a defense against my running back. Yeah. Like just like that's what's happening to me in week one. And I hate it because I have to, you know, watch my running back and hope he breaks to that tackle. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Daryl. Wants to know, I want to subscribe to in-season tools. My draft is over. Is that the Foot Clan? What is the difference between the UDK and the Foot Clan? Not clear to me. That is a good question. And and for the most part, yeah, I mean, the Foot Clan supports us. You get a weekly extra podcast. You can play in the Megla Bowl. But there are a ton of in-season tools. Our week, weekly snapshot, the premium projections, the... Uh, uh, the flex rankings, uh, the stream finder, which is unbelievably valuable. All those tools are active for the join the foot crowd. So, yeah, and it, but like you said, it's not just tools. It's also you get at you. you the community is there's, there. There's one more thing that you get. What's that? The <laughs> Megala Bowl hit 10,000. Oh, get us where you at. We're over 10,000, but you can still get in. Yeah. You can get in all the way up till the day before kickoff at megalobowl.com. So I eat 15,000? I don't know. How did we not just play this song, the whole good vibes section? This this song is good vibes. And look, our uh, producers oh. even fixed. They fixed the uh, <laughs> Megalobowl screenshot there. Yeah. Who, who knew that right being there. publicly shamed in front of hundreds of thousands of people would, would make you fix things? He went home and cried that day. <laughs> yeah, he did. He I went home it. and cried. I looked through his window and I... Al, you had a pretty good draft last night. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I mean, there was a lot of um, 
you know, every team's got their own kind of like aura. And your team, you have a co-manager, the biggest loser, Brian Ketron. And you two had a lot of like discussion. Was there disagreement? Was there any like, did you ever butt heads? Uh, no. Okay. I, I had to give him permission on one that he was adamant about. Which that. one was that? I want to know. That was uh, Carter, Michael Carter. Okay. And you were kind of anti-Carter. I felt and like he was, was like a, get a reach where we where he wanted to grab him. When you took Michael Carter, I fist pumped. <laughs> I was going to say the rest of the league was happy. When you took him, it was like, oh, awesome. We were not targeting that player. Thank but to you. be clear, we won't. Ref that won't reflect on you. His yeah. performance will reflect on your co man. It's kind of a loser pick. It, it was hard because I wanted Tunyon there, and then Tunyon went right after it. And oh, then that's Brooks, brutal. Brooks, how was all the barbecue? I'm not sure. Yeah, mm. we missed you, Brooks. We felt like you should have been there. I missed you guys, but had had my uh, home league draft, the one that got me into fantasy football. I know, football, I, so. know I know. Well, I, I need the people to know why. <laughs> what about I, the I one wasn't that among got, you guys? What on about draft the one though? that got you like the prolific career as like um, producer the, the sensation? Judge. Producer sensation. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we ate, didn't we? Oh man, I am still the the meat is coursing through my blood. Shout even out to Chad moment. Ward. Oh, Chad yes. Ward, unbelievable. Yes, I mean, Grill Master, Foot Clan. Can I get him on retainer? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Just that would for be, my house. That would be a pro move. But Foot Clan, watching Jason <laughs> at, at this thread, this man. He enjoyed himself some BBQ. You became a couch. I yeah. became a couch, and I am still a couch today. Yes. Yeah, so, um, well, good thing we I have. I am still a couch. Now, Brooks, we have bold predictions uh, tomorrow. I'm not a cat. Yeah, that's the plan. Tomorrow is the bold predictions show. <laughs> Do not miss it. We will. Uh, we got some, some spice coming your oh, way. Oh, I can't wait. You'll need the antacids. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. We want to thank pristineauction.com for supporting the podcast. T. Higgins, signed logo football right now, 35 bucks up there. Justin Jefferson, the current bid price, $58 for a signed jersey. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Make sure you follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we are always appreciative of your reviews over there as well. We will see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.